Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do a book recommendation video for advanced horror readers. This video is intended for those of you like myself that read horror regularly and are looking for new books to pick up and this is basically a response to a lot of the videos that go up regularly and I have put them up myself where we do horror book recommendations for beginners and whenever I do these videos because a lot of my subscribers already read horror they say that's great but what about the rest of us? What about those of us that are already reading the genre, what should we pick up? And so I wanted to give some recommendations for books that in my opinion you will get more out of if you're already a horror reader. These aren't necessarily the first books I would recommend picking up in the genre. But before we get started I do want to give a few disclaimers and the first one being that I do not want this video to be seen as gatekeeping. So if you are new to horror and you want to start with these books, go ahead. I'm never going to tell someone not to read a book and if you are an advanced horror reader if you read horror all the time and don't want to read these books, that's valid too. This isn't required reading by any means. This is just a fun video topic that a few people have recommended I do and I've been wanting to put this video together for a while now. So hopefully this will just be seen as a really fun way to talk about the genre. I know a lot of times people talk about how to get into books like in science fiction fantasy and I think that those conversations happen a lot more because there's a lot of world building that happens in fantasy and a lot of hard technology that's often brought up in science fiction that can make it more intimidating. In my opinion, honestly, horror, you can pretty much start anywhere. So I do feel like it's a pretty wide open genre and it's more about finding the subgenre that appeals to you. But as I mentioned, I did find some books that I felt like you're going to appreciate a little more once you're comfortable with the genre, once you're familiar with the tropes. And I also want to mention that this video is not just a list of the most disturbing, terrifying books that I've ever read. If I haven't yet, I'll put up a video like that soon. But basically, this video is instead just recommending, again, books you're going to appreciate more as a horror reader because I personally believe that beginner horror books do not need to be for scaredy cats. Personally, I did not actually enjoy reading horror until I found some scary books to pick up. So these books are somewhat terrifying, somewhat not, depending on your interpretation of them. But I think I've talked enough about the introduction, so let's get into the actual recommendations now. First, I'm going to start with the book that I think is the most obvious on this list, and that is House of Leaves by Mark Z. Denzelutsky. And this is a story that is so hard to describe. It is the story of a house that appears to be larger on the inside than it is on the outside, and it's basically a story within a story. And as everyone knows, this is a very unique book to pick up. It is a book that involves careful reading. There are sections with footnotes or sections where you have to turn the book in certain ways in order to read it. There are layers to this book and it's definitely one to take some time and go through very carefully. I really feel like this is not the first horror book you want to be picking up because it is very exhaustive and it's done that way on purpose. It again has so many layers to the story and while so many people will say that it is one of the most psychologically terrifying books they've ever read, I think a level of immersion is required in order to have that experience. And so every single Halloween I see a booktuber who normally does not read horror will put this book on their TBR list and say I'm going to read House of Leaves because it's a big horror book and I'm always a little bit nervous for them and I just always want to nudge them to try something different first. Obviously again and I'm never going to discourage someone from reading it, but I'm just like, I think you'll appreciate it more later. I, of course, have read this book and I did a review on it and a vlog, and so I will have that link down below. I'll be honest, it's not my personal favorite book, but I'm very glad that I waited until I had read a lot of horror before picking it up. It's one, honestly, I could see myself rereading again and hopefully appreciating more the second time around. But I remember starting it when I first got into horror and I had to put it down and said, I just can't deal with this right now, it is too much. So. I think a lot of people watching this video will agree that I wouldn't personally put this book in the hands of a beginner reader and I would definitely say wait till you're a little bit more comfortable with the genre and then pick it up. 
Next, I want to talk about Hex by Thomas Old Whovelt. And this is a story set in a small town where there is a witch that wanders around the town. And the town keeps the witch under control. They have sewn her lips shut so that she cannot cast spells. And within the town, there is an agreement that no one will let the larger world know that this witch is there. They keep it a secret. And so they control a lot of the technology and social media in their community. And of course, there are teenagers teenagers in this town that do not want to follow the rules and so they decide to possibly let things slip and terrible things ensue. This is a book that I'm putting on this list because once again I see this book show up on so many people's TBRs and then I see their reviews of them later and they are so disappointed by this book because it does not meet their expectations. So many people pick up this book and say, I want a scary witch book, I'm going to read this. And while yes, there is a witch in this book, I will say that the witch is not the terrifying part of the story. Instead, this is one of those horror books which if you're familiar with the genre, you will start to see this trope come up again where the horror is not the monster but the people themselves and the terrible things that they will do in order to try to control things. And so I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was smart and intelligent and just really played with the genre but I will say that it was not what I expected and I do think the synopsis can often lead people to expect this to be a crazy witch book and certainly this book does get crazy by the end. I do not want to dismiss that but it definitely is again much more about the people and I find that because of that people who go into this book just expecting a crazy witch book are often again disappointed by it. Next, I want to talk about Only the Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones, and this is a novel that follows a group of Native American men who years ago went on a hunting trip that went terribly wrong, something very bad happened, and now in the present day they're starting to see visions of elk and believe that some kind of entity is possibly hunting them down. And this is a book that I have a very complicated relationship with. It actually took me three attempts to get into this book. And it's not that it was too scary, although certainly this book is really intense. It was the fact that I found the narrative structure just very jarring. The way the dialogue is written, the way the sentences are written, just did not work very well with my brain. And I have talked to other readers who had similar experiences and found this book a little bit difficult to get into. However, I went back and actually ended up doing the audio, which is always how I recommend doing this book, and having the narrator read it to me, I felt that the story flowed better. And it's definitely worth the investment to get into the story because it is so well done. This book I describe as very psychological, which I do think psychological horror is something that you kind of have to work your way into, that I think at times a lot of horror books that work best for beginners are ones where the horror is a little bit more obvious. And this one definitely has some gruesome and dark moments. I need to give content warnings for harmed animals. But in terms of the story itself, it has these gruesome moments, but the really scary parts in my mind were the parts where the story is playing with the characters' minds and you don't know what is real, you don't know what's happening. And I just found that subtle horror to be so good because it just got under my skin. And I just really love this book. Again, I think it is well worth reading, but I just don't think it's the easiest book to get into because of the way the book is written and so I would definitely say to put this book on your TBR list but make sure that you are ready for it prepared before you pick it up for yourself. Next, I want to talk about A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. This follows a family that is down on their luck. They've had a lot of financial trouble over the last few years, and they are now noticing that their young daughter appears to be acting as if she is possessed. They don't have the financial means to get help through the medical profession, and so they actually end up turning to the church and agreeing to go on a reality TV show in order for her to get help. The story is told from the perspective of the younger daughter who is following as these events unfold. And then we also get little snippets of a blogger who is talking about this reality TV show in the present day. 
and the story, of course, goes from there. This, I will say, is probably the least advanced of the advanced books I'm going to put on this list, but I still think it's valid to discuss this book because it's one that, once again, I find a lot of people will pick up when they want another super scary possession story. Maybe they've only ever read The Exorcist or only seen the movie, and they say, I want a super scary possession story. They pick up this book, and it's just not what they expect it to be. Paul Tremblay plays a lot with the tropes of the possession story, and so I definitely think that you need to be familiar with possession books, or at least possession fiction, in order to fully appreciate this book. It definitely plays on that level, so I at least encourage you to have watched some possession stories before going into this one. And it's just Without spoiling anything, it's not quite the traditional story. It basically takes the exorcism narrative and turns it on its head and twists it into something else and does a lot of really good social commentary on other things surrounding these stories. And so again, I can't say too much without spoiling it, but trust me, if you are expecting a rehash of The Exorcist, it appears to follow those tropes, but then it does not. And I just find that a lot of readers who, again, don't read horror on a regular basis, don't fully appreciate this book and end up being let down by it, while other people who perhaps are more familiar with possession stories and are looking for something different, looking for a different perspective on the subgenre, end up really enjoying Enjoying it. So again, I just think you need to be in the right space, have the right context in order to really love a book like this. And you know me, I love Paul Tremblay. His writing is fantastic. His storytelling is great. And I do recommend this one. It just maybe shouldn't be your like first horror story. Next, I want to talk about The Devil in Silver by Victor Laval, which follows a man who is incorrectly placed into a mental institution and has to spend time there. And the story involves them interacting with the other members of the institution, both the staff and the other patients. And there is a horror element to this book. There is a question of if he is seeing something in the dark, if there is a devil in silver there. But most of this book is very quiet, very slow paced, and the horror really comes from the terrible, way that people are treated in America when they do have potential medical issues that involve mental health. And so I think for a lot of people picking up this book, myself included, I originally wondered if this book was actually horror. I was wondering, does it count? It doesn't seem like horror. Just, it didn't really hit the tropes of what I expected horror to be. I wanted a super scary monster jumping out of the closet and well that just didn't happen. And so I would recommend this book more to advanced readers that are more comfortable or familiar with that quieter horror where it's slow paced, it's subtle, it's psychological. And again you often get to see in a lot of horror books that they really are a great way of having social commentary done on some really important themes and topics and great discussions will come out of these books but they just don't follow those really traditional horror narratives that we come to expect if we only say watch horror movies. So this is a book that I didn't fully appreciate the first time around and really had to reread before I actually fully got what the author was doing. And finally, I want to recommend Red X by David Demchuk, which is one of the most unique horror books I've ever read and is definitely not a book for beginners, but it is a book that is well worth reading. So even if you're watching this and you're newer to the genre, trust me, it's worth putting on your TBR and working your way up to this book. It's just maybe not the first book you want to start with. Now, this book is set in Toronto, Canada and is set over a course of several decades leading up to the near present day where we have a series of events involving men, particularly gay men, who have gone missing in Toronto. This story is very much inspired by real events. Real gay men have a long history of disappearing out of the city and the police have done very little to track them down and find out what happened to them because they were a minority and because of their status, they just were seen as lesser importance in terms of the investigation and the book, of course, deals with the horrific nature of the city of Toronto and how it really dealt with its citizens. So it's definitely not a book that will flatter the city by any means, 
But at the same time, David Demchuk is a lover of horror and it is clear from the beginning of this book to the end. And so he has some really good conversations within this book about the intersection between queer narratives and horror and you can just tell that this book is very self-aware. It's also very meta because within this story, which is somewhat fictionalized, it blurs the line because you have the author actually interjecting and telling their own story throughout this novel. And I'll be honest, even rereading it, I couldn't quite tell where the fiction ended and the nonfiction started. It just blends together, which makes the book even more horrifying. I'll be honest, the first time I read this book, part of it went over my head. I liked the parts I liked, but I didn't fully grasp the entire story. I ended up rereading it. I did it on audio, which I think is a great way to experience the story. And in that second read, it really came together. So this is a book that in my opinion, even if you are a seasoned horror reader, I actually encourage you to read this book multiple times because each time I read it, I get more and more out of the story and it becomes more psychological. It becomes terrifying and it's it's really become a favorite book, but it took a while to get there because it had to grow on me. I had to sit with it. I had to think about it. And it's a book that will leave you thinking about it well after you finish the last page. So highly recommend that one. Well worth your time, but it is so different that the classic horror books, there are no giant creatures jumping out of the roadside or anything like that, but it still manages to be one of the scariest books I've read and yeah, I just could not recommend it enough. So that is it for this video here. I would love to hear your opinions down below, especially on this video topic. So what do you think of the books I talked about? Are you planning on checking any of them out for yourself? And I would also love your recommendations or opinions on what are horror books that are better to read once you are an advanced horror reader or a reader who regularly reads the genre. So I'd love for you to share some comments down below. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I do read a lot of horror as well as thrillers, science fiction, and fantasy. You could help me out by sharing this video around online and if you hit the little notification bell you'll never miss a video from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.